Yad Vashem, as most Israelis will tell you, is a Holocaust museum. And I would add that it is the second most visited site in Israel after the Western Wall. Should you take the time to visit? My answer is no and yes. As I'm walking from the light rail station to Yad Vashem, I will start with the reasons why you may not want to go. Think about it. Why do tourists visit Israel? You come to Israel because this is the only place where you will find the Western Wall, Nazareth, Temple Mount, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, the only place where you will find the Dead Sea, well, here in, in Jordan. But you get my point. The thing is that the Holocaust didn't happen here in Israel. So if you want to learn about the Holocaust, maybe fly to Germany or Poland where the Holocaust sites are located. Think about it. If Yad Vashem is just a museum, then it could be anywhere in the world. I've heard that there is a very good Holocaust museum in Washington. The thing is, and most people don't know this even after they've visited Yad Vashem, Yad Vashem is not a Holocaust museum. Or to be more precise, the Holocaust museum is only a very small part of Yad Vashem. So what is Yad Vashem? In Hebrew, it is defined as Rashut Zikaron, and I'm saying the Hebrew term because even the official English translation of it is not correct. It is translated as Remembrance Center. The correct translation, however, is Remembrance Authority. Yad Vashem was established by a law of the Knesset, the Israeli parliament, as an official authority. Now you might say, okay, what's the difference, Holocaust Museum, Center, Authority? but the difference is huge. They can do things that no museum can ever do. Yad Vashem can grant Israeli citizenship to non-Israelis. No other museum in the world can do that. In a few minutes, I will tell you all about it, but my point here is that you shouldn't visit Yad Vashem only to learn about the Holocaust. You can do that much better in Germany or Poland. You should come here to learn about how Israeli society deals with the memory of the Holocaust, how it was commemorated in the 50s and how it was changed in the 60s and 70s, and how it is done today. There is so much to say about all that, and in this short video, I just want to give you some small example of what I'm talking about. Before we enter Yad Vashem, I just want to show you this staircase. It leads to a path that connects Yad Vashem to the top of Mount Herzl. You cannot understand Yad Vashem with, without understanding this path and this mountain. Yad Vashem is not a standalone site. It is part of Mount Herzl, which is Israel's national mountain of remembrance. Yad Vashem stands at the lower part of the mountain. The largest military cemetery is laid out above it. And at the peak of the mountain is the grave of the father of the modern Zionist movement, the father of the state of Israel, Benjamin Zeev Herzl. And this, by the way, is also the order of the National Memorial Day in Israel. First, we have a day to commemorate the Holocaust. Six days later, we have a Memorial Day for the soldiers. And a day after that is Independence Day. On another day, we will walk this path. But right now, we are entering Yad Vashem. I will skip the museum which is where all the tourists go and show you a few points of interest. This is by no means a criticism of the museum. It is a really good museum and the Yad Vashem guides are absolutely fantastic. But this video is about something else. Let's start with this monument. Before I talk about it, I want you to think about something. If you were asked to specify which date Israel should hold its Memorial Day for the Holocaust on, which date would you choose? Israel chose the date on which the Warsaw Ghetto uprising started. That way, the focus was on the Jews who fought against the Germans. This monument shows exactly that. On one side, you have brave Jews fighting back, and on the other side, Jews who went to the camps. This monument is a replica of the one in Warsaw, except that there they have this side on the front, so it can be seen when ceremonies are held. And this side is on the other side that no one sees. 
In the 50s, the focus was on the new Jew who, like the new Zionist Jew, fought for what is right. In this, the new Jew is different from the weak diaspora Jews. Only after the Eichmann trial at the beginning of the 60s, did the Israeli perspective started to change. Until then, and it might surprise you to learn this, people didn't want to talk about it and people didn't want to hear about it. They wanted to start a new life. The Yom Kippur War in 73 also helped to change the Israeli perspective as we were forced to learn that we are not always as strong and smart as we think we are. Now I want to show you another place that represents the old way of thinking. This building is very impressive. It is called Oil's Core and it resembles the tabernacles in a way. And by the way, there are many references to the Bible in Yad Vashem. The name of Yad Vashem itself is taken from a verse in the book of Isaiah. To them will I give my house and within my walls a memorial Yad and a name, Shem, better than sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off from, from memory. In Hebrew, it is 10 times deeper, so I have to say it in Hebrew too. ונתתי להם בביתי ובחומותיי יד ושם, טוב מבנים ומבנות, שם עולם אתן לו אשר לא יכרת. This building was built in 57 and there are the names of 22 camps on the floor. At the time it was very modern, but today it feels old fashioned. Now I like old fashioned, it helped me to show you just how commemoration has changed. But I don't like what is going on in this building today. I will be as careful as I can here because I know some people won't like what I'm about to say and might try to twist my words. This is where leaders of the world are brought to hold speeches about how terrible the Holocaust was and how Israel is the answer and how Israel has to be strong. Now, is it true? Yes, but there are so many buts. Israel wasn't established because of the Holocaust. Like many other countries, it was established as an after effect of World War II. The Holocaust just proved that what the Zionist leaders were so afraid of could and indeed did happen. Nordo, Jabotinsky, Pinsker, all of my Zionist leader friends, who are today names of streets in Israel, predicted what would happen. They said, eliminate the diaspora before it eliminates you. Without the Holocaust, Israel would have been 10 times stronger and the world would be a much better place having had the Jews make a bigger contribution to the world. I might do a video specifically about this topic, but you know what? Let's say I'm wrong. Is it what we want that world leaders are brought here to say that we need Israel because we are weak and afraid outside? Israel is our home not because of anti-Semitism and not because of the Holocaust. It is our home for one reason only. Because Israel is our home. We are called Jews because we come from Judea. And I'm in Judea right now. It couldn't be more simple and self-evident than that. And after all this talking, I want to show you a newer site here. It dates from the 80s and represents a more modern approach. It is a very emotional and powerful place where there is no need for, no need for talking.
13 years old, France. Nicole de Gallo of Frankreich. Adolf André Fleischer, French Lochestre, South Park. One of the things I appreciate is that the narrator said it all in Hebrew, English, and Yiddish. Very often when I was guiding Israelis in Berlin, Israelis would ask me why the explanations of their memorials weren't in Hebrew. And I would clarify that although the Holocaust happened to our families, it happened to us as Jews, not as Hebrew-speaking Israelis. The language that was most spoken by the one and a half million Jewish children who perished in the Holocaust was Yiddish, a language that in many ways died with the European Jews. And this brings me to the last place I want to show you on the tour. We are now walking through the Garden of the Righteous Among the Nations. If you remember, right at the beginning of the tour, before we have even entered Yad Vashem, I said that this institution could grant Israeli citizenship. There is a committee in Yad Vashem led by a Supreme Court judge that honors non-Jews for risking their own lives to save Jews. Once approved by the committee, the righteous among the nations can not only become Israeli citizens, but they are also entitled to free healthcare and a pension equal to the average national wage. I don't know if you have noticed that, but although I'm in Yad Vashem and I've been talking for some time, I haven't yet said the words you expect to hear. SS, Nazis, Hitler, Treblinka. And there is a good reason for that. As far as I see it, that's not what this place is about. After my army service, I went on a World War II journey. I bought a camper van and drove from Normandy, France, to Stalingrad, Russia. Four months, 10 countries, only World War II sites. It was a crazy journey. I met Churchill's daughter. I slept in the Treblinka parking lot. It was a very special journey. It was a World War II tour, not a Holocaust tour, but I did visit a lot of the places that are connected to the Holocaust and the camps. Somewhere in Poland, I think, it hit me that I'd been focusing on the wrong thing the whole time. I'd learned so much about Hitler and the SS and about Auschwitz, but what did I know about, about the Jews, um, about the Jewish communities? Nothing. Now I'm on the way to the Valley of the Communities. I don't know if even 1% of the visitors to Yad Vashem go there. There is an information center, but the main memorial is this maze that has been dug out of the ground and lies open to the sky. The walls are engraved with the name of 5,000 Jewish communities, most of which were destroyed in the Holocaust. This is what ought to be the main focus here. Not the evil, but the Jewish world that has gone.